What is a thermal bridge? A thermal bridge in architecture is an element that runs from the exterior of a building to the interior of a building that carries heat. The element is a strong conductor, usually metal or concrete, for example, rebar. The problem of thermal bridging is presented when the rebar is heated by the air inside the house or outside the house that heat transfers through the wall at a faster rate than it normally would, causing heating problems. The rebar runs right through the insulation and outside the house, providing a direct path or bridge for unwanted heat to escape or enter the house. This model deals mainly with thermodynamics. Heat can be transferred by convection and conduction between materials. We know that heat flows from areas of higher temperature to lower temperature. The more conductive the material, the greater the cross-sectional area, the greater the difference in temperature, the higher the heat flow rate will be. The heat transfer can be calculated and is proportional not only to the cross-sectional area of the bridge, but to the conductivity of the material and its depth. Materials such as brick and concrete will conduct heat through them, which necessitates the use of insulation. Metals, such as support beams, conduct heat much, much faster than the wall. Copper, for example, is one of the best conductors, which explains its use in wiring. The behavior of electricity in wire is very similar to the flow of heat through the rebar. So, it makes sense that we, if we use a very conductive material in the wall, the heat will flow through faster and we see where the problems would occur. The graph shows the relationship between the change in temperature and the heat flow. The greater the difference in temperature over the material, the greater the heat flow rate. So, in the winter, heat flows out of the building at a faster rate. The heat flow through the rebar can be calculated using the following equation, where change in Q is the amount of heat that flows through the bar, and change in T is the change in time. Change in large T is the change in temperature over the material, and rho, or K, is the specific heat conductivity. A is the cross-sectional area, and change in X is the change in distance, or the depth of the material. In our model, the steel rebar has a specific heat capacity of 0.115. If your house is 18 degrees Celsius inside and outside is negative 10 degrees Celsius, you have a change in temperature of 28 degrees Celsius. The cross-sectional area of the rebar is about 100 square millimeters and its thickness is about 0.4 meters. The results show that in one hour, our model loses 0.4 watts of heat through the rebar. That accumulates to almost half a kilowatt in one month. In a large building, with more and larger thermal bridges, this loss is greater. In our model, we see a small section of wall with rebar, which is commonly used as reinforcements. It runs all the way through the wall section, imitating a thermal bridge. The wall was built to the approximate thickness of a real wall with realistic materials. As in a real building, the bricks and concrete are stacked and poured around the rebar, embedding it in the wall. We started first by building wood forms attached to a base. The forms allow a space to set the concrete into and to let it dry. The rebar was then added, and added around it and the concrete was poured. Four days later, the concrete slabs were dry and we could continue building. We applied mortar to and stacked bricks on one side of the concrete slab and left a two inch space for insulation. Once everything had dried, we began the difficult task of puncturing the rebar through the metal containers, yet keeping a seal so that water would not leak through. The addition of the two hot plates to heat up the water was the final element in our building of our model. Throughout the construction of this model, materials and processes that are currently accepted in the construction industry were used. All of the materials used are compliant with the Ontario Building Code, and the process of construction was very similar to the norm. However, small differences were made because of the small size of the walls. 
The model was built at a one-to-one -one scale to imitate reality as much as possible. The situation we are trying to recreate in this model is one where a thermal bridge is occurring in one building and not in the other. In the building with the thermal bridge, we are attempting to recreate a steel reinforced balcony which would act as a thermal bridge. However, due to economic factors, we did not create a poured concrete balcony, but we replicated it with the rebar that would be reinforcing it. In the building without a thermal bridge, we are trying to replicate proper construction practices where there is no energy loss due to thermal bridging. So we see the model is built on the very simple concept of heat transfer, but when you apply that concept to architecture, we see its effects. In a large apartment, for example, with many balconies, this effect would be multiplied many times. Balconies require multiple reinforcements and large apartments often have steel structure framing. Along with the concrete, also a good conductor, we see many thermal bridges in one building. This causes the building to be extremely wasteful of resources and accumulate high heating bills. We know that the higher the difference in temperature, the higher the heat flow rate. So, in the winter, for example, when the outdoors is very cold and the inside is very warm, the heat will run out of the building faster. Since the loss of energy in the form of heat is both an environmental and economic waste, ways to stop thermal bridging have been created. This technology is known as a thermal break, which separates the heat transferring components while still maintaining structural integrity. This can come in the form of a structural member which is made from a material with a low coefficient of heat transfer that allows rebar to protrude from it on both sides. This allows reinforced concrete to be well insulated and structured. In our de demonstration, the results showed that the thermal bridge wall section carried heat through the rebar, keeping the 25 degrees Celsius water at a constant temperature, while the properly insulated walls water dropped to a temperature of 24 degrees Celsius over a time span of approximately two hours. This demonstrates that thermal bridging, bridging, even in such small amounts, can have a negative effect on a building's ability to maintain a constant temperature. 